Hey everyone and welcome to the Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party causing all your friends to question. Hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host Michael Montalvo and for the next few minutes we will swim through the river of time to find out what makes today truly unique. On this episode we examine the events that occurred August 26. Without Googling, what was the loudest sound ever recorded in history? The answer may surprise you, but probably not. We will go into that in a moment, but first here's some unnecessary background. Krakatoa as an island is located in the Sundra Strait and was once part of the Dutch East Indies, although nowadays it's a part of Indonesia. Krakatoa Island is a volcanic island which gives away the answer and is still listed as an active volcano today. In fact, in April of this year, it erupted. The island of Krakatoa is thought to have been created by a volcanic eruption sometime in the 5th or 6th century, and with it, two other islands, Lang and Verlaten, which will not be a prominent part of this episode. Sorry for that. Also, It was made up of three linking volcanic cones. The volcano had a history of eruptions, but seemed to stop by 1680, after it had its last, up until that point, major eruption, and then it went silent. In fact, it was so quiet that people began to forget the danger, and the volcano was thought to be extinct. Much like Sue the T-Rex. My apologies to Sue. For two centuries, everything seemed normal and quiet and safe. Krakatoa was mostly uninhabited, but was home to some residents as well as a plethora of plant and animal life. But with an inactive volcano, they were in no danger. Do you like my foreshadowing? On May 20th, 1883, something began to happen. One of the cones had become active and had begun to spew ash-laden clouds as high as six miles. 100 miles away in Batavia, explosions from the volcano could be heard, but then it all just kind of went away, seemingly done by the end of May. But this peacefulness was not to last. I just realized this whole episode is all clickbait titles. On June 29th, 1883, the volcano resumed and set us on a path that would lead us to its sudden and uncontrollable outburst, much like a two-year-old who was just told no candy. The year was 1883, and on this day, August 26th, the volcano island of Krakatoa began a series of eruptions that would kill 36,000 people and produce the loudest sound ever recorded. On the afternoon of the 26th, at approximately 1 p.m., the first explosion happened, Then around 2 p.m., the volcanic island released a solid cloud of ash that shot into the air 17 miles and completely covered it. Over the next day, it was reported that the explosions were continuously happening roughly 10 minutes apart. Ships in the area witnessed pumice and ash falling from the sky and landing on their decks, and when nightfall came, two tsunamis caused by the eruptions hit the islands of Java and Sumatra 25 miles away. On August 27th, the volcano's strength grew, and throughout the morning, four major explosions occurred. The first from its southernmost cone, the second from its middle cone, and then the third, which would be the most deadly. Also, there was a fourth. At 10.02 a.m., Krakatoa erupted in what is the loudest sound ever recorded. I don't know how they recorded it, but it was a deafening 310 decibels. Let's put that into context for you. A toilet flush is 75 decibels. The siren on an ambulance is 115 decibels. A jet engine at takeoff is 140. A 357 Magnum is 165. A rocket launch is 180. Sounds produce shockwaves at 195 and my across-the-street neighbor playing music from his truck parked on the lawn with 12 people outside drunk and yelling over the already loud music at 3 a.m. because he got a new sound system and decided that that 
was the best time to show it off and was so loud it literally caused my windows to vibrate, but somehow everyone else on the street was fine with it. <clears throat> it was up there too. Across the street neighbor aside, the explosion was loudest at 310 decibel. On the Nautilus website, Atish Bhatia wrote, A 10 decibel increase is perceived by people as sounding roughly twice as loud. The Krakatoa explosion registered 172 decibels at 100 miles from the source. This is so astonishingly loud that it's inching up against the limits of what we mean by sound. The explosion was so massive that it was heard in Perth, Australia, 2,800 miles away, and was the equivalent of about 200 megatons of TNT. To put that into perspective, the SAR Bomba, which as you may know was the most powerful thermonuclear device ever detonated, was only about 57. Nine square miles of the island sank 820 feet below sea level. Experts say that anyone standing within 10 miles would have become instantly deaf. Sailors 40 miles offshore suffered punctured eardrums with one ship's captain writing, So violent are the explosions that the eardrums of over half my crew have been shattered. My last thoughts are with my dear wife. I am convinced that the day of judgment has come. I'm talking a lot about how loud it was, and here's why. The sound was so loud it was heard over 13% of the Earth's surface. So from all this, what was the aftermath? Aside from what was already mentioned, over 36,000 people died as a result of the eruption. Pyroclastic flows killed around 1,000 people 29 miles away, but it was the 98-foot tsunamis that caused most of the damage and death. Reportedly, 165 coastal villages and settlements were completely wiped out. While the Dutch Indies claimed the death toll to be about 36,417, some estimates put the number much higher at 120,000, although we will never really know for sure. Krakatoa the island had three cones. From these, Rakata, the southernmost of the three, was the only one to not be completely destroyed. Because of all the ash and pumice thrown into the air, the surrounding areas were in the dark for two and a half days. Millions of tons of sulfur dioxide were thrown into the stratosphere where they oxidized into sulfate ions, which, as you know, reflected some of the sun's rays causing temperature drops and abnormal weather until 1888. The finer particles that stayed in the atmosphere for three months caused sunsets that were only described as spectacular, and it's actually believed that Edward Monk's 1893 painting The Scream is depicting the sky with all of these dust particles. And finally, for this report at least, it resulted in the first recorded instance of a bishop's ring. This occurs typically after eruptions and is a brownish or bluish halo around the sun. Now, knowing all of this, do we know what caused it? The simple answer is movements of the tectonic plates. In 1927, the volcano woke again. Smoke and debris changed the landscape, and a new island emerged by 1930, which was named the Child of Krakatoa, or Anak Krakatau. The island continues to have volcanic eruptions to this day, though not as deadly, with one occurring in March 2014, and the most recent in April of 2020. And that's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.